All right, we're slowly getting organised here once again, operating off multiple uh, devices to be able to get some internet where we are. Still waiting on Telstra to come out and fix us up. G'day, Shane. Howdy, Rob. Hi, Kim. G'day, John. Matty, welcome. Dave, Alan, you're in there as well. Scott, uh, good to see you on the feed. Uh, we're starting to get ourselves organised now. Shouldn't be too long until we come into the 77th episode of the Mind Lab show. G'day, Glenn. How are you going? Derek. Uh, who else have we got coming in here? Rob's there. Thank you for joining us. Gary on the feed. Adam's in the house there on the YouTube channel. And we're there having a look. Uh, Trevor PI is about as well. Welcome, Trevor. Hi, Francis. And g'day, Dawson Digging Holes. Welcome, uh, Susan. Glad to see you there. Dig it with Deb. Uh, good to see you on the feed as well. We're just about getting ourselves organised. Probably uh, another 30 seconds or so. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? Got a great show coming up tonight. Lots and lots of information for you. Um, uh, got uh, some great questions coming to uh, over the, the few days before the last show. Hi, Andrew. How are you going? G'day Damien, welcome Wayne. John's on there and I think we're uh, getting close to time for us. We've got uh, just a little more to go. All of the feed is working well. We've done a great little practice session. Okay, welcome to the Mind Lab Show, Australia's most informative prospecting live stream. Uh, this is the place where you'll get all the tips, tricks, and super deals you need for your next gold prospecting or treasure hunting adventure. In this episode, we're going to check out all the happenings around the gold fields in prospecting and treasure hunting news. We'll learn how to replace a skid plate on the SDC 2300 in this week's tech tip. We're going to launch our new segment on prospecting clubs around Australia. That's going to be very interesting. Of course, I've got the great questions to be answered, uh, which I'm going to answer some live for you later on in the show. And I've got some fantastic kit to give away to help you out when you're searching for gold in the great outdoors. I'm Gold Digger Dave. Let's get digging. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. That signal so sweet when I hear that beep beep couldn't think of many things better. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. Well, the gold price uh, has unfortunately, back into the Treasury News, the gold price unfortunately has dropped a little bit uh, over the last uh, week or so. It was down to around about $2,626 per troy ounce. Uh, uh, so I think it's moved a little bit since then. That's about $40 less per ounce than what it was last week. According to expert speculation, prices are still predicted to remain positive amid uncertainty over the Biden NATO meetings. Uh, the price of gold at the start of 2022 was around the $2,500 uh, per troy ounce. So we're certainly ahead of where we were just a couple of months ago. But as we all know, prices fluctuate and we'll have to wait and see what lies ahead over the next few weeks. Fingers crossed continue to see more rises than falls as the year progresses and we'll keep you posted as we keep a close eye on gold prices in the coming weeks. Now last weekend uh, we were actually able to mine us then to run the first of our uh, demo days again for a little while so for those of you who don't know what our demo day is they're designed to show you what is available in the MindLab range of gear uh, and at what price. They will run at all of the MindLab uh, Miners Den metal detecting superstores uh, and uh, they were well attended as usual. 
and the knowledgeable Miners Den team pointed a number of people in the right direction to get started on a rewarding prospecting or treasure hunting adventure. The sausage sizzle was enjoyed by participants and many headed off with a great deal on the right piece of Mine Lab kit for their needs. You know, it's surprising that Mine Lab metal detectors account for almost uh, 95% of metal detectors that are sold in Australia across both the coin and relic categories. Uh, and, of course, nearly all of the gold categories, probably even a larger number there. So you know when you buy a mine lab that you're going to get the best machine available on the planet for hunting for gold, coins or relics. Now, there are other brands about that, uh, even with releases of new machines, still only account for 1% or 2% of the users uh, of metal detectors in Australia. And the very good reason is that mine lab metal detectors are world leading because of their technologies that are just so far in advance of even new releases from other organisations or companies. Uh, and also, you're going to find they're an Australian company, they test it in our soils, and that's why mine lab hold up to 95% of the market. Of course, people can choose to go with other machines, but the majority already have their heads in the right place and know that if you're going to be finding the best coins and relics and the largest gold nuggets, you need to have a mine lab metal detector. Don't let anybody try and take you from a mine lab detector to a different brand. You're only going to be disappointed. We see this time and time again at shows and things like that. People are actually coming in and they're wanting to buy a machine uh, and you're querying what they've got currently and you find that they've got one of these other brand machines that just don't stand anywhere near the performance of the mine lab machines. As mine labs say, performance is everything. Now, of course, uh, we're also one of the biggest uh, supporters of uh, caravan and camping events, uh, outdoor shows, that kind of thing. And the next show that the Miner Stand team are going to be doing is the Victorian Caravan Camping and Touring Super Show. So we're back there with the full range of the Mine Lab detectors and accessories. We take everything out so that if you drop in and see us there, we'll get you a great deal on accessories or on your new metal detector. Say hi to the team. We're going to be on stand number 63 and 64 in the accessories pavilion at the Melbourne showground. So this event kicks off on the 6th of April and goes through, that's Wednesday the 6th of April, and goes through till Sunday the 10th of April. It's open uh, on Wednesday and Thursday from 9.30am till 5pm and on Friday and Saturday night it is 9.30am through till 6pm. Uh, of course the Sunday again uh, it closes at 5pm, 9.30 till 5pm. It's at the Melbourne Showgrounds as I said, uh, look at the gate. It's going to slug you 25 bucks uh, for adults. Concession is $20. Children under Children 15 and under are free with a paying adult. There's also parking uh, on site, which I think is about $15 per car. So if you're in the mine for a new Mine Lab metal detector, drop in and see the team. Have a chat to the Mine Lab representatives that will be on stand uh, to come across from Adelaide to give us a hand over there. And we'll be sure to get you out digging some holes and getting the good stuff. Now, uh, that was the, the show. It was a, a great show, that one. I'm sure we'll have a good time again. Uh, Miners Den uh, Certified Mine Lab Training Sessions. Now, this is a first. It's exclusive to Miners Den. Uh, there's a, a lot of training sessions coming up on the 26th and 27th of March in Bendigo. Now, look, uh, you can head to minersden.com.au. There's not many times left now. I think there's a couple left for uh, the GPZ 7000. But apart from that, I believe most of the segments or uh, sections are all booked out. Uh, there's two or three spots left in the 7. If you've bought a 7 from us, you haven't done your training, great opportunity to jump in and get it done there. All you need to do, have a look at uh, the dates uh, that are up on our minersden.com.au webpage. Uh, select a date that suits you, which is the 7,000, is the only one that's left, as I said. Give the store a call, we'll get you booked in, get you trained up, and you'll know exactly what you need to do to get out and start your uh, prospecting and gold hunting journey. Um, uh, 
Whenever any other courses fall, we're about to be able to ready to launch the next lot of training sessions, both in Victoria and in New South Wales. So in uh, Victoria, and the training sessions are run in Bendigo in the goldfields. The next lot coming up is on Saturday the 9th of April, and we have the 2300 session there in the morning, the GPZ in the afternoon, and on Sunday, we have a GPX 6000 session on on Sunday morning. If you're in New South Wales, our training sessions are run out at Waddle Flat right near our Penrith store. So if you're in the Waddle Flat area around Safala, those kind of places, uh, Miner's Den are only a short trip away, easily able to get stuff out to you. And those courses are coming up on the uh, 23rd of April in Waddle Flat. That's the SDC on the Saturday, 9am. And the GPZ 7000 is 1pm on that Saturday also. Sunday, we've got a GPX, Sunday the 20th, 24th of April, we've got the GPX 6000 course. So look, if you purchase through a Miner's Den store, or a Miner's Den Mine Lab Metal Detector Superstore, I should say, then this is free for the SDC 2300, the 6000, and the 7000. Look, if you haven't purchased through us, don't despair. You'll still be able to get Australia's best training, certified Mine Lab training on the Mine Lab machines from the Mine Lab experts. There's a lot of Mine Labs in there. Unfortunately, if you've bought from somebody else, you will have to pay a small fee and we'll still get you trained up to where you need to be to really kick off your gold prospecting adventures. So that's uh, most of the stuff there. There's a short little uh, montage here of one of our recent training sessions. We'll play that now for you just to have a bit of a look at. There's certainly no better place to go than Miner's Den to get your machine. We service them for you, so if it breaks down, chances are it's going to come back to Miner's Den anyway to be repaired. Uh, we train you on the machines, and we have Australia's sharpest deals. It's a great little sessions out there in the bush. Love being out there when I can get a chance. Now, look, uh, I just wanted to again touch on our new Adelaide store. It's now fully shifted across to our new location at 29. Sir Donald Bradman Drive in Mile End South. You have got a few picks up there of the store at the moment. Uh, might have used some of these in the last week or so again. But uh, it's really looking good. Paul and Diane, fantastic guys. You've done a great job on getting the store up and running uh, and ready to go. We've only got the signage that's still being worked on at the moment. And hopefully that's going to be completed again in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it'll make it a little easier to find us. We've got parking right out the front opposite the uh, Mercedes dealership and right next door to National Tiles. So that's the Adelaide store. Really, really pleased with the way it's coming along. A little bit more to do yet, but uh, I'm sure we, we, with Paul and Diane over there, uh, they've got us looking in great stead uh, uh, going forward. So that's uh, most of the treasure hunting and prospecting news that uh, is important uh, for people to know. Uh, we're going next to have a look at our weekly viewer giveaway. And what a giveaway I've got for you this week. This week I'm giving away the full set of Signal Gold Prospecting maps. Yes, again. One for giveaway for the uh, Facebook and one for the YouTube. Now, these things are worth $22, $22.95, I think, each, the Signal Gold Prospecting Maps full set. There's 10 of them. Uh, it includes the latest four titles that he's got out, and they cover a wide range of area around the Victorian gold fields. Included uh, Ballarat Creswick, Bendigo Whipstick, Castlemaine and Bourne, Dalesford Barkstead, Inglewood and Kingower, Malden and Morong. St Arnold and Stuart Mill, of course, Maryborough and Denali are there, Talbot and Majorca, as well as Wedderburn and Wheeler. Now look, to be in with a chance to win, easy. Let us know you're in the watching. Just post a comment in the feed, say hi, or a simple suggestion is uh, enough to put you in the running to win this. I'll take a bit more of a look at the Signal Gold maps in detail later in the show in our product spotlight. Good luck and happy prospecting. 
Now, uh, up next, uh, we're going to have a look at our gold discoveries that we've got in there. And the first story this time is coming from uh, a multinational mining company called Endeavour Mining. And they've announced the discovery of a record 3 million ounces of gold uh, registered in uh, in the measured and indicated categories. So 900,000 ounces is also an inferred resource. Uh, in 2021 across a sizable portfolio of West African assets. Okay, it's exceeded its uh, target of 2.5 million ounces. According to Endeavour Mining CEO, the significant discoveries we have made showcase the strong exploration potential within the portfolio and continue to confirm West Africa as one of the world's top regions for gold discoveries. West Africa is a region with a high gold prospects with 79 million ounces estimated to have been discovered in the past decade. The region also represents 12.5% of global gold output. It's a very interesting story. It looks like Endeavour are right on the money when it comes to looking for gold in West Africa. Story two, uh, again another listing on the Australian Stock Exchange in 2016 uh, by Great Boulder has seen its market capital grow 12-fold from around $8 million to $55 million today. One reason for this great boulder for this great boulder managing director Andrew Patterson says can be attributed to the timing of consecutive gold discoveries the company made in May last year in relation to its mines in West Australia's Midwest. We were in Sydney and have had consecutive announcements two days in a row. One from Whiteheads and the other of some really high grade results at Sidewall. That really caught the market's attention and after we continued drinking at Sidewall, which throughout the second half of last year returned a nice run of continuous high grade results. The best of which, he said, was one of the highest grade gold intersections on the ASX for the whole year with 14 metres at an impressive 36 grams to the tonne. Patterson said the decision was made to shift the company's focus towards gold uh, to set itself up in the long term for becoming a gold producing company. Again, these guys certainly seem to be on the right track. Now, uh, it's time to have a look again at the Miners Den uh, Metal Detector bundle offers. And uh, these two super offers have been selling well. There's a few left now. I don't think it's going to last till the end of the March Madness. But we've got the SDC 2300 and the GPX 6000. So look, those of you who watch the show know that uh, uh, this is the place where Miners Den MyLab Superstores released the best deals on the range of MyLab metal detectors. We still have a few GPX Ultimate bundles left in stock, uh, but like I said, they are selling quite quick. Now that offer again saves you a packet on a new GPX 6000. For $1 extra, Miners Den MyLab metal detector Superstores are throwing in an additional 17 inch coil with every GPX 6000 sold in March or while stocks last. That's one buck, gets you $525 worth of uh, value at recommended retail price. Strictly limited numbers are available, so first in best dressed, no lay-bys or rain checks on this offer. Of course, uh, we need to have a look again at the SDC 2300 offer. We're still celebrating the start of the 2022 prospecting season with another offer. This one again, the 2300 has already got an offer from MineLab, which includes the standard SDC carry bag and a spare battery. Australia's largest certified MineLab dealer, Miners Den Australia, has charged, supercharged this offer by throwing in a pro swing harness value $149 on top. Of course, don't forget that every SDC that is sold through Miners Den Australia Superstores uh, comes with a patch lead standard. It's in the box. You don't even have to ask for that one. We just throw it in. It's uh, 65 bucks worth of value uh, for you straight off. So there you have it. Uh, Miners Den Australia and MineLab X, what, Mine Lab Electronics have teamed up again to get you the sharpest prices uh, on some of the best deals in the country. Be quick or you'll miss out. Once the stock's gone, it's gone. I've only got a limited number, as I've said. Okay, we're going to have a quick uh, tech tip now from uh, Nathan on replacing the skid plate on the SDC 2300 metal detector. Let's have a look what Nathan has to say here. 
G'day, I'm Nathan from the Mine Lab Show, and tonight's tech tip is how to replace a SDC skid plate. I've been asked a lot of times a quick and easy way how to replace one of these skid plates, and that's what I'm going to show you tonight. All right, so you'll need a couple of flathead screwdrivers, and what you'll want to do is you'll want to get the skid plate off off this edge here. So you'll want to start up here with some skid plates. It's very easy. With some of the newer ones, it's not so easy. So we'll see how we go. So we'll start with just this corner here. You just want to sort of work your way around. Sort of holding onto it, it's all right. Oh, yeah. So there we go, we've got that bit off. And so you may need to get off this little flap down there as well. And so once you get that down, it should just come off like that. So that's it. So that's a very quick and easy way on how to replace a skid plate on an SDC 2300. Now we're going to be on. Uh, get, uh, now look, uh, we've got uh, the club focus on. This is a new segment on the Mind Lab show. And tonight we're going to have a chat with Tony Downing, the vice president of the Bendigo Prospectors Club, as part of this new segment, Club Focus. G'day, Tony. Um, uh, thanks for coming on the Mind Lab show. Thanks, David. I believe uh, it's congratulations are in order because you had a bit of a luck uh, at the Wedderburn Token Hunt, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's uh, quite a good price too, I believe. Uh, Mine Lab uh, put up a GPX six thousand for um, uh, for the prize, and uh, yeah, uh, how did the token hunt operate, and what were some of the uh, rules? How was the the major prize one, for example? Uh, it's, uh, it's two hundred keys placed down one hundred first day, one hundred second day, and uh, the only rule really was a maximum of fourteen inch coils. All right, I think we're going to just give me one moment now. I'm kind of trying to understand what everybody's saying. Do we need to uh, stop here just for a moment? Uh, we're going to come back to you in a second, uh, Tony. Um, we're going to head now into just having a look at our um, uh, gourmet paid. Okay, so we're going to come back now and have a look at the coffee bush kit, I believe. Just a moment. We'll just see if we can get our, uh, our stream working there. Uh, let's uh, go to that now uh, in three. G'day folks, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid and today's subject that we're going to talk about is a little bit of a touchy topic. Some people get a bit embarrassed when you mention it, some people cringe, others get angry and some people just really don't care. And what today's topic is about is the angle of your digger. Having watched lots of YouTube clips over the past oh, many years now, people will always, or they end up scraping their targets. Uh, and you know, you can see it coming. They tend to do it time after time. And two of the reasons they do that is because they put their digger, whether it be a trowel, whether it be a shovel, they dig towards the target or when they've dug down, they scrape across the bottom of the plug. And this will inevitably scrape a coin, ruin a buckle, just destroy something that was actually quite good in the first place before they put their digger into it. When you locate a target, you really want to dig a hole big enough to get it out. Not monstrous, but just big enough so that you're not going to be near, if you like, the target. Use the pinpoint function on your detector so that you know round about where it is. And a good rule of thumb is whatever sort of size your coil is, or figure out how big the target is, and if it fits within your coil, use your coil size as the diameter of the hole to dig down. Now, when you start to dig, don't dig at an angle towards the target. The most important thing that you need to do is actually dig straight down. So the sides of your hole are nice and, and plumb. Now you can see here I've placed, as the ant has found, a half penny down there, just as a, 
as a target to show you. When you come along with your detector, you get your signal. What you want to do is make sure that the center of your coil is over the center of the target. There are two ways. You can do the old 90 degree one where you get the target that way. Then you turn around 90 degrees and you get the target that way. Or on the Equinox, well on the Equinox range, you use the pin pointer mode and you would find out where it was. Now, our target is right under the center of our coil. Now, instead of digging right down on the target with your desired digger, use your coil size as your guide as for how big your plug should be. If you've got a bigger target, well, you'll find that out in the pinpoint mode and you will dig a bigger hole. But rule of thumb, whatever your size of your coil is that you're using, you should be able to use that as your plug diameter. Now, for this little exercise, I'm going to use my Tiger Blade to dig the hole. There's our half penny there. There would have been our coil size. So what I'm going to do, we'll take that out for the moment, is you see how I'm already now wanting to push down at 90 degrees. And you can do multiple digs if you like. And we can get that. And you see near the end, I'm just pulling it back slightly. When I dig my full circle, actually this is enough, what I'm going to do is just bring it back a fraction. I haven't scraped across. You see now that the plug is sort of fractured. So I can come back this side again, do the same thing. There we go. And that plug will come out if the soil was good and tight, nicely. Now, sometimes it's gonna depend on your soil type as to whether your plug comes out nicely or whether it's all sandy and, and comes out all over the place. But let's say that our target, after we've dug down, is in the bottom of the hole. What you should do then is get your pinpointer out. And what I like to do at this stage is I would drop my sensitivity. So you press your minus a couple of times so that you really finely hone in on where the target might be in the bottom of the hole. Again, this is so you do not destroy it. But what could happen is you just might have been slightly out uh, in your digging and your target isn't in the bottom of a hole. In fact, it's in the side wall. Now what happens, and I've seen it time and time again, is that someone goes, oh, it's in the side wall. And they dig straight, straight in on it. That's a no-no. You really want to be out at the sides, away from it, to dig it out from the side. Or in fact, even a better option is that you would actually, you know, take another bite of the plug out here, and then you can just gently break that away. And you see, I'm not scraping across the bottom. I'm just coercing it so that the piece of soil pulls away. You can then take that out, you would recheck again, you go, yep, good, it's not there, it's in this plug, and you can safely retrieve it. Now, you've retrieved your target, it's nick free, you haven't damaged it, great. You've still got one more job to do, and that is to put all your plugs back, fill in your holes, turn your top over again so that it's, it's all over and nice, then we can stand up, give it the old stamp down, and make it actually look like no one has been there at all. And that's the sign of a really good detectorist. So there we go. We've talked about the touchy subject. Always put your digger in at 90 degrees don't come in on the angle. You just really want it at that 90, so you, and, and don't scrape across the bottom of your hole because that, that's just gonna destroy coins if they're just in the bottom as well. So, straight angle, all around, 
that's the way to go because at the end of the day, no one wants to put a scrape mark across a sovereign. I'm the Coffee Bush Kid, and it's been the top tip for the Mind Lab Show. Okay, you're back again, Tony. Um, uh, I'm not sure whether anybody can hear you uh, at the moment. Just uh, welcome again. We'll try and uh, re redo this one. Uh, got a little technical glitch there. You can hear me all right, Tony? Yes, I got you here, Dave. Okay, can we see if, uh, can we hear them all right in the feed there? If uh, someone could put a comment up for us to see if we can hear um, uh, the uh, sound coming through from Tony now. Okay, I'm not, I was just waiting in the feed there. I'm not hearing anything coming through at the moment. Um, okay, I think we must be back. Let's see how we're going. Let's start talking. We're back now with uh, uh, Tony Dowling, the uh, Vice President of the uh, Club, the Vice President of the Bendigo Prospectors Club. Okay, it seems like it uh, may have some sound up. I'm just waiting to see if anyone's coming back through. Any sound there at the moment, guys? Just... Uh, I can't hear him. All right, look, we're going to pull this one for tonight. We're going to have a look uh, at our systems for next week, Tony. Thanks for joining us. We'll um, come on and um, uh, talk to you again, try and line it up again for next week's segment. No worries. Thank you, Dave. Right, yeah. Thanks, Tony. Bye-bye. Okay, look, uh, back with me again. Look, we, we will try that segment again next time. Somewhere around, uh, we lost the sound inside our program for some reason. So, uh, not sure what happened. We'll keep that segment and hold it over till next week so that we can go again from there. We all worked when we did the uh, little test, but of course, uh, the gremlins have come back out and jumped into the feed again. Let's not worry. Uh, we'll try and uh, fix that for next week's one. So, now we're up to this time uh, have a look at a couple of the posts from the uh, Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Photo Competition. So look the entries coming in at the moment are a little slow at the moment. There's been many great finds that are not actually getting to our pinned post on Facebook uh, or well, on the Miners Den Australia Facebook page. Now let's have a look at a couple of the past posts. Uh, one from a little while back and congratulations to the couple who posted. Uh, you're going to be in with a great chance to score the $50 gift voucher from Miners Den. Let's see now. Firstly we have an entry from Victor with uh, a photo of his results and here's Graham who scored 0.36 grams from his 700 gram bag of pay dirt on his first panning. Of course lastly we have a photo from Wendy who brought some pay dirt for her husband uh, for his birthday. Wendy reported they had the first time panners and had great fun panning the pay dirt for gold. Don't forget you can get yourself some Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt in a range of sizes from our 700 gram uh, bags right through to our new one ounce buckets. Australia's richest pay dirt and don't forget post your finds because uh, if you put them up there you've got a great chance of scoring a $50 gift voucher. Okay, let's uh, have a look at this week's coin and treasure discoveries. So first one up tonight we're looking at is uh, a story about uh, someone who was excavating in Hungary and have discovered a very rare gold Roman coin that features the murdered Roman emperor. The third century coin shows Emperor Volanus who co-ruled the Roman Empire for about two years with his father until the emperor was assassinated at the age of 22 by his own soldiers. Because of Valaris's short reign, coins bearing his face are extremely rare. The exact location of the site is being kept secret for the time as the archaeological site is being investigated. Illegal metal detectors are a big problem in Hungary, so the location cannot be revealed for the time being. The excavators found the 0.2 ounce or 5.6 gram gold coin known as an Arius during a metal detector survey of the site. The coin minted between AD 251 and 250, AD 253. One side of the coin features a portrait of the bearded emperor with a crown of rays on his head, while the other side depicts Liberius, the personification of freedom. So that's an interesting story there. A couple of bar coins, they still seem to keep coming up. And of course now we have uh, a second story here from uh, Colombia that has taken a step to recall, recovering a long lost Spanish wreck and its fabled riches. 
but it may still be a rough ride as Spain and native Bulvarians have staked claims to the booty. Maritime experts consider the wreck of the San Jose to be one of the holy grail of Spanish colonial shipwrecks. Along the daydream of treasure hunters worldwide, the wreck of the San Jose Galleon was first located off Colombia's coast in 2015, but it has been left untouched as the government determines rules for its recovery. The Uber loot, which experts estimate to include at least 200 tonnes of gold, silver and emeralds, could be worth billions of dollars if ever recovered. Long the daydream of the treasure hunters worldwide, the San Rose Galleon was sunk by the British Navy on the night of June 7, 1708 off Cartagena de Indies. Next is a great little story there. That was uh, very, very good from uh, what we had uh, there for our treasure hunting news. Now, we did jump out of order a little bit here and we had the coffee bush kit on before. We're actually going to come back now and uh, have a quick look at our product spotlight tonight, which is the Signal Gold Prospecting Maps. These detailed maps of the following features on them, and they show the major and minor mine sites, shallow gold uh, workings, historical puddling machines, quartz reefs and camping areas and uh, caravan spots. So uh, that's just some of the features that are on there. A comparison with other maps may reveal areas that have not previously been mapped. Places well worth visiting with your MineLab metal detector uh, to have a bit of a hunt, really. There are 10 areas in the series which uh, with more on their way. So there's Ballarat, Creswick, Bendigo, and I've been through these before, Castlemaine, Dalesford, Inglewood, Molden, Maryborough, St. Arnold, Talbot, and Wedderburn. There's a couple other names after all those, but I read them out a little earlier. To be in a chance to win this, just uh, let us know you're in the feed. Very, very easy to know. It's a great addition to the research tools in your prospecting kit and the full range of signal gold prospecting maps are available online at minersden.com.au or any of your local Miners Den Mine Lab metal detector super stores. Okay, that uh, was our little product spotlight for tonight. Uh, now, I think we are going to have a special presentation next on the, with the Coffee Bush Kid and he's going to have a look at the MineLab ProSwing 45 Harness. G'day folks, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid and today I want to talk to you about the ProSwing 45 Harness. For years now I've been using a harness and a bungee cord for my detecting because I find that it helps me last longer out in the bush and makes the, the detector more comfortable to swing. But just recently I've picked up this new harness and uh, it is absolutely brilliant there's some great features here and this is this is a J strut what they call a J strut where you would hook the bungee cord onto here instead of it pulling off your shoulder as I found that it normally does this now transfers the weight of the detector from here all the way around to your hip when you first get it, you do have to fit it to your body. Now, you're a bit like me and have the voluptuous figure of a drain pipe, you need to really pull it right in. But once you've done that, then you, ha then you can set the J strut up so that it is in the right position for you. So it comes in at the back and it feeds up under here to your bungee loop. <coughs> There's the bungee cord, and the beauty with this is that it's actually an adjustable one, which makes detecting uphill just as easy as if you were detecting on the flat. It also then comes with <coughs> the adapter for the shaft, and that's just Velcro, and goes in uh, on the top end of your tightening uh, turnbuckle there. So the bungee cord clips in there nicely, It'll clip into <clears throat> there nicely, just like that. And there we are. And for my height and the weight of the detector, it's all ready to start swinging. And you can see here, I'm not taking 
any of the weight of the detector. It's all on the bungee cord. You can see it taking the weight there and being transferred down to my hip. It's a brilliant piece of kit. So here it is in action. You can see that the bungee cord is taking the weight of the detector. It's allowing me to swing parallel to the ground as I want to do. The weight is on the top of that J strut. You can see that as it pushes down. And as I keep walking along, I, I don't need to be squeezing it, squeezing the handle of the detector and taking all the weight. It's just nice, it's light, it's allowing me to just swing naturally. And because I'm not in discomfort or have to take the weight all the time, it just makes life really, really easy. Well, that was me swinging on the flat using the bungee cord, but I'm gonna show you now the next little feature of how easy it is to adjust the bungee cord when you go detecting uphill. Now you've seen how the bungee cord takes the weight of the detector on the flat, but when you come to a raised hill, and you might want to go way up a hill detecting all the way. You'll see like that right now, my bungee cord has gone loose. And as we all know, there's nothing worse than a loose bungee cord. So now we'll show you how to adjust it on the fly so that you can keep detecting right up to the top. When I'm at the base of the hill, I can easily just pull that out. And you can see how I can adjust the detector up and down. So I just get it to the height that's right for me. And I go, yep, that's good because that's the angle I'm going to be working on. Just pull it straight up. There we are. The bungee cord now is taking all the weight of the detector again, and I'm not having to lift it whilst detecting uphill. So that was a test run of the uh, Pro Swing 45 harness, a great piece of kit. It's something that you should think about because when you're out in the field, it will help you last longer, it will reduce your fatigue, you aren't carrying the full weight of the detector all the time. You can keep your concentration sharpened for all those little signals that you'll want to hear. And it just makes detecting a lot nicer and more comfortable. So you'll last longer in the field. I'm the Coffee Bush Kid, and that's a product spotlight for the Mind Lab Show. All right, now look, uh, that's uh, another great segment there from the Coffee Bush Kid. Um, uh, thank you for that. Let's uh, now move on into our viewer questions. So, look, this week I've got a question that's come in from Damien who asks, Hi Dave, I'm curious on how different coils for any machine perform better than others. Like, bigger ones are more sensitive, elliptical, uh, like easier to pinpoint with, etc. How does it work and function? Uh, thanks for your help again. Uh, look, uh, great question, Damien. It's one I get asked all the time. There's a general rule that the larger the coil, the less sensitivity you will have to the smaller gold, but the more depth you will get on bigger pieces. You'll also find that uh, you'll get greater ground coverage uh, with that bigger coil. However, that could make it a little harder for you to swing in the scrubby areas. And of course, vice versa. A smaller coil will give you a bit more sensitivity to the smaller nuggets, but you will lose a bit of depth on the larger targets. Of course, you won't recover as much ground with a smaller coil, but you will be able to poke it in amongst all of those scrubby areas. Um, now look, this comes down to uh, uh, the shape. The next thing it comes down to is the shape. And again, there's a general rule with the shape that elliptical coils or the oval shaped coils will be a little more sensitive to the smaller gold than the round coil. An elliptical coil will also be a little easier to poke into the tight areas and it makes pinpointing much, much easier by using, of course, the pointy end of the coil when you're pinpointing. Although it won't go as deep as the round coils, it will have greater ground coverage at its maximum depth. If you look at the round coil, you'll find that it has better depth than an elliptical coil, but not quite as much sensitivity to the smaller nuggets. 
is the final thing to look at in the difference between calls are the types of windings uh, inside and their uses. For example, a double D coil has the windings that are two Ds back to back, and this kind of configuration allows for a wide scan area at its maximum depth. It's also sensitive to an area uh, is uh, down the middle strip uh, of the coil and I use the front tip of the coil again when pinpointing. The coil also has the advantage of being able, well more stable, in highly mineralised ground and on certain machines it's able to run stable in areas of high electrical interference. Okay, the next type of coil to look at is uh, the mono coil. And this coil has the windings around the outside rim and uh, in a circle shape. The signal that it puts out comes in an ice cream cone shape, and this means that it will generally achieve more depth than a double D, but will have less coverage at its maximum depth. So it's very important to overlap in those areas. Because the windings are around the outside rim of the coil, you can pinpoint using the front tip or on the side. It doesn't really matter. It's just whichever you prefer. There's one last uh, configuration to coil that we don't actually have a diagram for here, and it's called a figure eight or anti-interference coil. This is a great uh, coil for when you're attempting to work under areas of high power interference. I have a clip that is coming up in the next show or two where we show you the effect of the figure eight or cancel coil has in these areas. It literally makes an area that was unworkable due to high electromagnetic interference workable again and in a little experiment uh, the GPX 6000 has certainly has some significant improvements uh, in this area. Of course I mentioned above are the more common types of coils that are used on both gold prospecting and treasure hunting units. I'll have a look uh, in a couple of the other shapes and sizes that are less used on metal detectors uh, in next week's show. So I'll come back with the other half of the question for you, Damien, and I'll bring you part two of the answer in the next episode. So now I think we may uh, be able to head across and see if we can bring Tony back in for our uh, interview. I'm just uh, checking to see how the guys are going there with that. Uh, let's have a look at this stage. It's okay at this stage. Uh, uh, the second question I've got coming through is the two supplied coils that can be used on the gold monster. So that was a question from uh, Murray this time. Just let me check here. Uh, from Gold Hunter, sorry, who uh, asks, uh, can, you, can you use other coils other than the two that come in the box with the gold monster? Look, hi, hi Gold Hunter. Thanks again for the question. This stage, there's only the two supplied coils that uh, can be used on the gold monster. This is a 10 by 5 elliptical and the 5 inch round coil. Now, maybe at some point we'll find, uh, we'll get uh, other coils come out from the aftermarket manufacturers, but not uh, as far as I can this time. So now we're going to look to go back to our interview with um, uh, the vice president of the uh, Bendigo Prospectors Club and uh, let's see if we can bring Tony in now and we'll hit that interview once again. Okay Tony, it looks like we've got you back on uh, line there now. Can you hear us? I can hear you, yeah. Okay, it looks like we might have had some sound coming through so we're just checking that that's uh, working for us and we can start our actual uh, interview again. Uh, a little trick there for new players, we don't need to try and get two audio sounds out of uh, one phone which is an interesting concept. I can tell you myself uh, from our experiments, it uh, certainly didn't work there, Tony. So, uh, look, uh, welcome, Tony. Uh, we'll start right from the top again. I believe uh, congratulations are in order, and you had a couple of, um, uh, a bit of luck lately at the Wedderburn Token Hunt. Yep, I did. Won first prize. Okay. Quite surprising. Yeah, well, the, you guess you're in the, the in with the token hunt, so you've got a good chance of um, winning if you're actually in it. Now, I think the, the major prize was uh, a GPX 6000. Yeah, that's right. Um, of course, I believe you've already got one, so I think uh, your lucky wife has uh, scored herself a machine and uh, she might even be able to rival your gold finds uh, in the coming weeks. Yeah, quite possible. Uh, wife is stoked. Uh, quite exciting. Absolutely. It's a great prize of mine they've put up for the Token Hunt and they've supported it for a number of years. But it's interesting to know that um, uh, the Bendigo Prospectors Club have um, actually won the prize five times, uh, the major prize from the Token Hunt. Yeah, that's right. Uh, must be uh, luck 
luck uh, just to be a member and uh, I think the presidents won it twice and uh, Three other members have won it once each, so there you yeah, go. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good score. So if you're looking to join a prospecting club, you may, may, may as well join the Bendigo Prospectors Club and uh, you can head up to <laughs> Wedderburn and uh, win the token hunt, seems the way that it goes. So that's very, very well done. Now, you've been uh, the president of the Bendigo Prospectors Club. How long have you been in the role and uh, how many members roughly does the club have at the moment? Uh, it's my second year as a president and we have around about 80-odd members. Okay, that's very good. And uh, you know, do you run a regular meeting or you have a meeting out in the bush or you, you, you do regular weekends away? How does the format normally work? Uh, it's normally the second uh, weekend of the month and there's 10 meetings uh, per year. Yep. Uh, we don't do the two hottest months of the year, generally uh, December and January. Okay, very it's good. It's generally too hot. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's uh, not good to be out in the bush when you, you're going to fry yourselves. Um, now, look, I have a few images that uh, the President Ray Swinnerton provided, and it looks like a club uh, has a number of awards that go to members, uh, and they've uh, celebrated the milestone just recently. Um, yeah, that's the uh, 25th anniversary. The club's been going 25 years, and uh, still just as strong as when it first started. Uh, we also have... Uh, Gold find of the year, and we have a relic find of the year. So, uh, the couple of uh, prizes just out for that. There's a couple of uh, trophies. Yeah, we've got the trophies up on screen now, and they look quite good. Uh, obviously, both the uh, gold find and the relic find trophies. And then, I believe you also have a uh, club member uh, award as, as well. Yeah, there's a club member of the year, and it's just voted on by all members. Everyone puts a nomination in, and uh, it just happened to be my wife, Mandy, that uh, won it this year. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, that, that's very good, and it's uh, good to see that uh, you're rewarding the people who are actually putting a lot of effort in to keep the club and everything going, and then uh, to top it off, you win the uh, the Wedderbird token hunt. It's um, uh, very, very good uh uh, and going to a very, very deserving people. Now, um, uh, I've got an image up on the screen at the moment now that's showing a typical club outing. Uh, how many members do you actually get to, to heading to the outings and things? Like, it looks like on the photo I've got there from Ray that there might be uh, 25 or 30 people there for the outing. Yes, it does vary. It was uh, probably around about 50 on, on that day, uh, generally from 20 to 50. The average is probably around about 30. But uh, of late, we haven't been able to have meetings at the hall because of the COVID restrictions. So yep. there's been a few more coming out to the outings because the uh, monthly meetings have been at the outing. Okay, yeah, well, that's a good way probably to combine it over the, the better months of weather and things like that. So that uh, uh, gets it all happening out at the one place. Well, look, uh, that's, uh, we've put some information and things up into our feed. Now, we, if we want to find out more information or we want to join the club, uh, what's the best way to, to go about uh, seeking out more info? Uh, jump on our prospecting page on uh, Facebook, Bendigo Prospecting Club. Uh, you can message uh, the admin on there and he'll uh, give you all the information you need or you can actually email Club at gmail.com. Okay, fantastic. Uh, we'll put those uh, links up into the feed as well if anyone's wanting to, to join the club. It's a great club and I know that uh, my parents were uh, back in the early days uh, helping uh, start that club and uh, we did actually see that where we held our first meeting at the Welcome Stranger Motel. It's actually been pushed over now by uh, developers who are obviously going to put some houses or something where that meeting occurred. Maybe we should have got in there with our detectors to see if there's any gold under that building. It's uh, in the right spot. Absolutely. Look, look, that's been great. Thank you very much for joining to me tonight and having a little chat. This is the first of our segments that we're going to run on the different clubs and things that are around the country. And uh, tonight we've been talking to uh, Tony, who is the Vice President of the Bendigo Prospectors Club and the lucky winner of the Wedderburn Token Hunt. Uh, very good having a chat to you. Thanks again, Tony. Um, I'm sure we'll catch up shortly. Thanks, David. No worries. Now, look, well, there you have it, guys. Uh, that's the Wedderburn Token Hub winner and the Bendigo Prospectors Club Vice President, Tony Dowling. Let's have a look at a couple of uh, uh, things coming down now, and we're going to head off and start on our gold hotspot. Guildford, Victoria is today a small rural town approximately 126 kilometres to the northwest of Melbourne and 11 kilometres southeast of Castlemaine. 
During the early 1850s, gold was discovered in the Guildford area with rich fields in the direction of Castlemaine and Hepburn. This brought many diggers to the area to search for gold, with a large number of Swiss Italians settling in the area. The gold also brought thousands of Chinese miners to live and work in the area, with some predictions there were as many as 6,000 Chinese living and working around Guildford, Campbell's Creek and Vaughan in the 1860s. Some historians believe it was the largest concentration of Chinese miners in Australia at the time. Hostility towards the Chinese was avert and there were numerous local conflicts. Consequently, the Chinese miners gathered together for safety. The largest encampment was near the junction of Campbell's Creek in the Loddon River at Guildford. Sadly, no evidence of the camp remains today. At the time, it was mostly calico tents along with narrow thoroughfares dotted with joss houses, tea houses, boarding houses, gambling establishments, opium dens, theatres and even a circus. The Chinese worked not as individuals, but in a type of cooperative which allowed them to engage in open-cut alluvial mining. Some evidence of the Chinese diggers still exist at nearby Vaughan where a Chinese cemetery is located at the entrance to the reserve. Gold was also found in significant amounts at Vaughan and in 1859 it was estimated 13,000 people were living and working in the area. According to Doug Stone, the region around Vaughan is a great area to prospect for gold as you can both pan for gold and metal detect. There are great campsites in the bush along the Loddon River and you can venture out into the old miners' patches that include names like Murdering Flat, Dead Man's Flat and Grog Shop Gully. Okay, look, we're back there. I just saw a couple of comments coming up in the uh, the feed there. Not sure whether you guys are a little bit confused. The president, the vice president of the Bendigo Prospectors Club, has won the Wedderburn Token Hunt. So it's a completely separate from the club bar, and he's actually donated or given the prize to his wife because he also has a six thousand already. So it wasn't uh, a competition that they were running or anything like that. They've turned up with the Bendigo Prospectors Club to the event at Wedderburn and have won. Uh, or got the key that was the lucky key that was drawn out. So congratulations uh, uh, to them uh, and congratulations to all the members of the Prospectors Club who go up there and support that event each year and have won a uh, uh, won the prizes in previous years. So um, look, I just uh, needed to come now and have a look uh, announcing our viewer giveaway winners tonight. So tonight the viewer giveaway. Uh, uh, is the uh, Signal Gold Prospecting Maps. And the Signal Gold Prospecting Maps is a set of 10 of those. So it's uh, six original ones and four more that have just been released. Uh, those maps are now uh, available on minersden.com.au and that's what we're giving away tonight in uh, our viewer, a live viewer giveaway. So the uh, tonight's winners, when I look at Facebook, we have Andrew Brock or Brooke, uh, not sure what's spelt there. Um, and we also have, uh, that was on Facebook, so congratulations, Andrew. Um, uh, and Graham Day on YouTube, we also, congratulations to you there. You've also won a full set of 10 maps. So those maps are about 22, 95 each I believe so uh, congratulations it's a couple hundred bucks worth of maps coming your way guys just jump into um, the feed let Corey know with a PM or a DM or whatever they call them this way uh, and uh, you'll score uh, those uh, prizes we just got to know where to send them if you're near a store or good get ready to uh, jump in and uh, uh, pick it up from the store if you'd like so if you missed out tonight get organized be ready to jump on board for more great prizes next week. So, once again, we've had a couple of glitches with uh, setting up one of our live calls, but hopefully the stream's gone well for you. Uh, we're still waiting on Telstra to fix everything up, as we said, but we are finally getting there and can start to get a stream running properly. 
Of course, before I go, it's time to have a look at uh, what we've got coming up uh, on next week's show. There's uh, another Detecting with Dave where I take you through uh, my target extraction process. We find out what's happening in the prospecting and treasure hunting news. Uh, Nathan is back with a fantastic tech, tech, tech tip to keep your gear in top shape. And of course, the Coffee Bush Kid provides us with another one of his informative segments. Now look, I'm Gold Digger Dave from Miner's Den, and thanks for watching The Mine Lab Show. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, and share. Tune in next week for another episode of The Mine Lab Show.